What we're going to talk about now is simply some keys to self-motivation. And all of us have motivation of some sort. I define motivation as the desire to achieve that which you believe to be worthwhile. And many people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of the lack of motivation to push themselves or because they have not found something that they believe to be worthwhile to challenge them. I heard a poem once that said, um, many a flower has bloomed unceasingly and wasted sweetness upon the cold desert air. It's translated that means simply that many a talented persons have gone unnoticed and the world never had a chance to be exposed to their talent because that person did not take the time to begin to express or to demonstrate or to motivate themselves in the direction to bring that which they came into the universe to bring. How can you measure your motivation? How can you evaluate where you are on a scale of one to 10? Let's do this for ourselves mentally. How do you rate yourself from one to 10? Your mental attitude about yourself, how you feel about you, how you feel about life. How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the food that you take into your body? Do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? You know, it was George Burns. He said, we cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. And many of us get old before our time because we don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is a very good indicator on a scale of one to 10. Is it what you want it to be? Do you find it desirable? Are you satisfied? The job or career that you're involved in. Someone said that 85% of the American public unhappy with their jobs. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time? Doing something that you don't find challenging, that does not make you stretch mentally, that does not stimulate you, that does not inspire you. Something that you don't find a sense of fulfillment in it. If you're doing that day in and day out, it has to affect how you feel about yourself, your level of motivation, your relationships. What kind of impact is it having on your life? Is it nourishing or is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. Will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different because you came this way? Someone once said that life is our gift to us that God has given us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you formulating? Is this a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in? Think about that. What can we do? What are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low? Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, at some time you are going to get tired. At some time you're going to get in a rut, seem like nothing you do works out right. At some times it just seems like you just don't have the wherewithal or the will to do anything. That sometimes you act like you're punch drunk. You're just wading through life, just doing time day in and day out, looking at non-discriminatory television, anything that's on, just looking. And depressed, feeling powerless, feeling useless and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of a rut? How do you, when you know you can do more than what you've been doing and you're not doing it and you're discontent with where you are, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. 
Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. Tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again, and you will get a breakthrough. You can listen to the same tape for months and all of a sudden you hear something you never heard before. It have a special meaning for you. Or read the same book over again and you find some special insight. You said, I can't believe I didn't see that the first time. So you want to be involved in developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people won't take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves. Because they will fall prey to that conversation within. Oh, don't do that. You don't have time. You are too busy. You're too caught up in the rat race. Most people won't do that. Well, they won't take time to go to lectures. They won't take time to go to seminars. They won't take time to, to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery. And you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself. Because if you don't, I guarantee you that you will make a settlement. And most people have. And most of us already have. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? You know when we make settlements out of court settlements, you've heard them? That means that you decided to take something less than what you originally wanted to get had you gone into court. And the reason that you settled outside of court is because you didn't believe that you can get it. So you made an out of court settlement. Many of us are making in life settlement. We're settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work in our minds. We'll come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us settle for less than what we want out of relationships because we don't have the courage to change them. I had a seminar I used to do called, Are You Living Together or Dying Together? <laughs> Many people are just dying together. Gladys Knight used to have a song that says, neither one of us want to be the first to say goodbye. <laughs> the next thing is, in order to begin to find some keys to self-motivation to drive yourself, in addition to working on yourself, and as you work on yourself, you feel good about yourself, and as you feel better about yourself, you treat yourself differently. Develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valuable. Develop a health plan. A plan that you will follow because this is the only vehicle that you have to carry you through this experience called life. And you want to take good care of it because you love you enough. You care enough about you. And that's not easy. It is not easy having a health plan and sticking to it. But you're worth it doing it again and again and again. Next thing is, as you take care of yourself, the next key is, keys to motivation, to self-motivation. You want to live life with energy and passion. You want to make a conscious effort to be lively. See, in life, you either saying hello or goodbye. You either on the way or in the way. <laughs> Leave dead people alone. Stay away from these people. Just go away from them. It affects you. You want to smile. You want to be happy. You got a lot to be thankful for. But you watch some of the faces around you every day. And I tell you, some of these faces, they will put you in a depressed state of mind. 
So you want to avoid these kind of faces. When you see them coming, turn your head. Next thing is that you want to monitor your inner conversations. The things that you say to yourself. You want to watch them. And in watching them, you want to take charge. A friend of mine told me this evening, and she did it excellently. She said, I didn't want to come tonight. I was feeling so depressed. And I said, I'm going anyhow. See, that was the conversation. She said, oh, you really don't feel like it. You really don't need to do it. You don't really need to read anything. Forget all that. That's that inner conversation. Oh, you don't need to worry about trying to go into your own business. Forget that. You can't do that. What if you lose everything you've got? That inner conversation that stopped you from doing the things you want to do less, don't do that. How can you possibly think about being a motivational speaker? You don't have the contacts, you don't have the money, you don't know the right people. You're going to get up there and your mind's going to go blank. Forget all that. You remember that time you got up before some people and you panicked? You stood up and your mind sat down? Don't you remember? And I said, yes. And then I said, shut up. So you've got to learn to stand up to yourself inside yourself and short circuit override that conversation that's always going on. 85% of what that conversation will tell you is negative. It's negative. It will tell you you're tired when you really are not tired. It will tell you you can't do it. It will fill you with fear. So you've got to watch that conversation. And when you find it going on, you've got to stand up to it and say, I'm going to do this anyhow. I'm afraid, but I'm afraid not to do it. And I'm not going to let you stop me. The biggest challenge that you will have in life is you. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. The next thing that is a key to self-motivation is that you've got to ask yourself what do I want out of life what do you want out of life what do you want out of a job what do you want out of a career what do you want out of a relationship what do you want what gives you your life what how will you know when you got it what will make you happy you need to know you need to start asking yourself some questions what do I really really truly want you need to be exact about that. Don't be vague. Oh, I just want to be happy. That's too vague. What will make you happy? How will you know when you got it? Zero in on it. Be exact. Be specific. And as you do that, that will stimulate that superconscious mind or the reticular activating system of your mind that will begin to find those things, to identify with it. And once you begin to determine that which you want, take the time to write it down. Don't just think about it. Write it down. That is a subjective process that engages the subconscious mind. Write it down. Once you write it down, read it three times a day. Morning, noon, and night. 